Hey guys, welcome to Motivational Monday. I have Jay with us. Do you want to say hello? What's going on? What's going on? Awesome. So today we're really excited to talk to you about something that we both can relate to and we wanted to bring it to Motivational Monday and open it up for discussion. So we're talking about what it means to be a millennial Christian. So we'll start off by saying, what does it mean to you to be a millennial Christian? Um, this is, this is, this is such a hard, it, it's a weird phrase, right? So when we talk about millennials, you know, everybody want to think of this like weird generation. Right. You know, just, and actually millennials aren't that young anymore. So you talk about, I think. We're was, really not. We're the early 1980s, like 80, what, two or something like that. Exactly. It's like the beginning of the millennial period. So most millennials are. Five, yeah. Yeah. So they're over 30. You know what I'm saying? At least, right? So when we talk about millennials, obviously we need to pay homage to the age because, you know, everybody got this mindset they're still in their teens, which doesn't make sense. But I think it's this weird concept of um, anything, right? So when you're trying to, when you're trying to stay um, true to whatever it is, you know, you find valuable to yourself in this crazy world that we're in. So, I mean, pretty much you're trying to be true to the bylaws and the, um, what is it? The rules, <laughs> everything laid out. You want to stay consistent and try to ignore everything that's on the outside kind of badgering you. So when you talk about a Christian millennial, um, you're talking about an individual who is extremely pressured um, and uniquely placed, you know, to either go extremely left or extremely right. So I think it's it's one of those those situations. So yeah and it's funny that you you mentioned as far as like defining what a millennial is because you'd be surprised how much you really have to do that so yeah. i was at a work training and we were talking about like millennials in the work well the different generations and what they need from their leaders in the workplace and so we talked about like the baby boomers generation x yeah. um, millennials are considered generation y but then you also have generation z and so this one guy, he said something and he was like, yeah, because the millennials are starting to come into the workplace. I was like, sir, the youngest millennial is 21. Like, what are, sir, we're adults. Been working. <laughs> been working, sir. I've been in the workplace. But, you're, but a lot of people think of millennials as teenagers. And this, yeah. I was like, that's a whole nother generation. They're their own world. They're their own generation. <laughs> and it's, and it, it's different. So I have a sister who's 10 years younger. So obviously she's Generation Z, but yeah. we think differently. We grew up differently. We, She was born two weeks before 9-11. Good gracious. That makes her different. Yeah. You said, like the whole world changed after 9-11. Yeah. You said, I'm saying yeah. she was born September 5th and then September 11th happened shortly but 2001 yeah. so you know what i mean like everything's different she was born in a world where technology already existed mm -hmm. <laughs> you know so <laughs> when people say millennial and they think of us as like kids it's like bro i'm good and grown like grown. oh <laughs> not old but then you know <laughs> been working <laughs> what i will say is i feel like we have um we definitely have it the best and that's just simply working with kids and realizing one, they give them a computer, don't teach them how to type. It's just simple stuff like that. They don't teach them how to write in cursive. Um, that that bothers me. Write a check. Yeah, like you can't sign a check. You're gonna get them official documents when they get older in life to read through and review, um, containing a whole bunch of verbs they won't understand. Mm -hmm. To sign <laughs> their life away. That they're gonna and they're gonna print their name first of all because they can't write in cursive. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> It's just a whole bunch of just just dumb stuff. Um, but for us, it's so great. Um, and, you know, our generation, because one, we got to see the struggle before, you know what I mean? Like the floppy disk <laughs> and the CD. <laughs> yeah, they talk, I think it was like Best Buy was like, they're not selling CDs anymore, like starting July 1 or something like that. Like, I get it nobody, though, because nobody buys CDs anymore. Exactly, but it's like that. It's on their website. <laughs> Straight up, no more flash drives, really. I mean, everything's pretty much Google, Dropbox, Google Drive. Yeah, Dropbox, everything is just over the wave, the wavelength. But I think what that offered us was a chance to be more responsible, um, and definitely more aware, mm -hmm. you know, simply like we. I appreciate 
Google Docs. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> like I've already experienced a computer dying and losing everything. <laughs> so recently I lost my, so my computer dropped and this wasn't the first time my computer dropped. It dropped a lot actually. Uh, but Did you drop it or you dropped it on purpose? You got a little upset? No, 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 no. I've never dropped my computer on purpose because okay. it's expensive. That's a lot of money. That's, That's a lot of money. I'm not reckless. But it has accidentally dropped a couple times. Okay. One time it dropped and did not turn back on. Okay. I tried all the troubleshooting, push this, this, this at the same time and hold it for two seconds. Tried yeah. all of that. Would never turn back on. When I tell you, I lost a lot of my information. And so when I got this computer, I said, you know what? I'm saving everything that dropped yeah. off. As you should. Everything. You and, should. and now... I'm good because I, I mean I pay for Dropbox, so I have enough storage, and the show goes. <laughs> no, but see, you understand that struggle. That's gonna benefit you later. Because that's, that's why I feel like us. And I, I think they refer. Do they refer to us as the microwave generation? Is that us, or is that the one? Is that the microwave, the, microwave generation? Is that oh us? yeah, that's definitely us. I I don't me I don't I don't acknowledge that because I don't fully believe that. Only because it's not it's never been a right now ready attitude for me or the people around me. Um, mainly because we like I said, we experienced that struggle. But you're I feel like we operate better under pressure. So for me, you know, for a computer to die and I have something to do in thirty minutes. My mind is different from a kid that's gonna have something to do in thirty minutes, you know, five years from now. For sure. They, they might literally lose it. <laughs> I mean, like they might literally go off and off the deep end, you know what I mean? Well, as far as us, you know, we figure it out. Um, right. I think that's always been the case, you know, and they say, you know, things have been handed to us. I don't believe that. Like I said, we're in that weird middle period where um, we, I think we have the best preparation-wise, um, but it's the hardest decision-making-wise and choosing which yeah. lifestyle you want to live um, because we're such a, a combined... Um, Absolutely. We're a hybrid. Point. Yeah, hybrid. That's yeah. perfect hybrid of, of our parents and then the next g generation z that came after us like we're somewhere like juxtaposed in the middle and it's just like well where do i where do, who am what does it mean to be a millennial <laughs> exactly and i think what i've learned about millennials is that we're the i i think we're the first generation that has fought for um I'm not just going to go with the norm. Yeah, I agree. And as a generation, we're the first to really buck up against um, societal norms. And I'm not accepting it just because you said I should accept it. Exactly. It's, and the way it should be, um, because we're, we're creating a better oh, world. Us. <laughs> According to us, right? Yeah, me and you sitting here talking about it and everybody watching this video. Adults are like, no. Nah. <laughs> the old head is like, nah, we don't really rock with y'all like that. Right. <laughs> Like, think about our grandparents' generation. Like, you left the house, you went to school, you got a job, or you did or did not go to school, but you got a job, you stayed at that job until you retired, you got married, you stayed in that marriage until you retired, regardless of how much mess was inside of that marriage. You didn't exactly. talk to me. We had a whole, had a whole other family. <laughs> Don't even matter. I'm married. In the town next to your town, you had a whole other family. Because my wife know. But she ain't talking about it because you don't talk about stuff now. When well, no social media, but you want that nosy. The town talk, that's fine. The town can talk, that's fine. We still all gonna go to church together, and we're gonna show up every Sunday. Every Sunday, listening to whatever bro they got to say. Um, and whatever. you go, and we good, you know. That's it. Um, Sunday dinner, every do it all over again. I don't every. care who mad at who. You sit down at this table and you eat your food. Nasty. Your plate is clear. I don't good care what it tastes like. <laughs> good or nasty. It's all good. <laughs> Whatever. Exactly. Exactly. So how does Christianity look different for millennials as compared to different, like, previous generations? Like, what makes Christianity different for us? I think I think the, the main thing that's been great um, for us is we were, uh, and specifically for us, I think it's our, our ability to worship, right? So when we talk about um, going online, you know, watching it on TV, mm -hmm. social media, taking this way into it. Um, and then another thing, it, it's our, like you said, it's it's like that destiny for us 
to want to know more. We have that desire to want to know more and understand more. Um, and even somebody, you know, on Instagram the other day had put up a poll, like, how do you guys feel about non-denominational churches? You know, or are, are they good or should church have a certain structure? Um, I'm, you know, I enjoy non-denominational churches um, just because I think it gives everybody that freedom. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily that specific, you know, stagnant guideline that you have to walk in. But I think what what the millennial group has offered, you know, Christianity in its specificity is that that fluidity. Like you can you can do it so many different ways, right? There's so many different ways we can explore our religion, um, and, and not necessarily being wrong, right? So I think that's one of the words that's been kind of stripped. You know, that's wrong. That's been pulled um, for us because it's, it's more more or less about um, walking in the light, you know, or how we even look at, at scripture now, you know, the phrases yeah. and, and how it's taught and how we're educated on the Bible and things like that. Yeah. I feel have been extremely, um, shifted. It's been a, a, an extreme emphasis placed on understanding. I think that's what it, it, that's been really good for us is that they want us to, and when I say they, um, you know, our Christian leaders want us to understand it's more, right? Because I think, you know, back in the day, it was more of a fear-driven thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It was just so it, borderline scary, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, borderline yeah, honor, You're going to hell. Straight you're up, really like. what it's about. Hey, bro, like, you know, and it's crazy to think, like, okay, your grandma go to church for three services, you know what I'm saying? She started at seven this morning. She didn't get home till. 4.30 in the evening. Yeah, Sunday school, service, then and, then, and then like communion all in one day. Like. And then another service. And then you look at us and it's like, man, I'm um I'm sitting here reading the Bible on my phone. Right. <laughs> and I just and I just listen to, you know, whoever, you know, mega pastor or whoever you you know choose to worship with for 30 minutes. And I feel like I got my feel um mm-hmm. and what I needed, you know. In that time, and that's cool, yeah, and that's cool, you know what I mean? I feel like the, the one thing that I think that's been best for us is that we've now realized that church isn't, or I won't say we, we've now realized, we've now opened up the idea that church isn't only within four walls, you know, correct. Church, correct. Within, within and then, so, for me, like, I think one of the things I appreciate about being a millennial and a Christian is, like you said, learning that my Christianity can look however I need it to look, exactly. So I have my home church and I'm a very engaged member at my church. I grew up in this church. I've been at the church since I was like seven. Love my church. Oh, you a life member. (laughs) Like I remember when I was was like, wait, I actually have to get a member. Because when you were a kid, you were a member under your mom. But I was like, wait, I actually have to join. But I- (laughs) You can't take your wood to heaven. (laughs) But- even beyond that, like I consider myself a virtual member of yeah. a couple different churches. So there's Transformation Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah. I ain't never been to Oklahoma, but I follow his preaching. I, since I've started, I've seen every Sunday. Oh, yeah. Wow. Um, and the same thing with um, Sarah Jakes. Okay. So she's my favorite pastor of the Jakes Roberts family. I think she's. I like her preaching style better than her daddy and her husband. That's fine. <laughs> and that's fine. He speaks to my inner ratchet. Yeah. He speaks to... <laughs> <laughs> that's another topic right there. That's a whole other topic. But no, but like, I, I, like, I would consider myself a virtual member of both of those churches, and it doesn't negate the fact that every Sunday, almost every Sunday, I go, <laughs> I go to my home church as well. And like when I'm driving to work or anything like that, like I listen to sermons on YouTube. Yeah. That's not something previous generations had the ability to do. Exactly. Like that wasn't even available. So even when I was working retail hours and I wasn't able to get to church every Sunday, every day I was listening to somebody's sermon. And I didn't have to wait for Sunday morning service. Exactly. And that's, that's always been clutch for us. I think that's, it's so clutch. I mean, it's, it's get it, you know, and that, and again, that's the world we're living in. We're so um, sped up, you know, and not even the, the fact that that's more along the lines of anything, even when we speak, speak specifically to America, but everything's supply and demand, supply and demand, supply and demand. Um, so, you know, we, we're in this rapid pace of moving. 
Um, so when you talk about even just trying to fit in, you know, me having my scripture come to my phone every day at the same time, you know, my mother sending me a daily prayer every day, you know, it's, it's those things. It's like, okay, I got my worship in today. I'm good. You know, and, that, and that's, that's clutch. <laughs> that's extremely it clutch. It is. And I think uh, we as a generation, I feel like we could um, criticize about being so heavily focused on technology, but technology and social media can be a great thing if you use it the right way. Like when I scroll through my timeline, it's inspirational, it's yeah. motivational, it's uplifting because I follow the right people. Exactly. You know what I'm like Exactly. I use my technology for good. Yeah, like, as you should. But but we get criticized about being attached to our phones and you know all this out on third. But it's just like, yeah, I'm attached to my phone, but I'm watching sermons. Like, is that really bad? <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, and I pay for it every month, so I'm gonna do what I want. Don't need to go there. <laughs> we only have to touch. But even phone. now, I mean, it's it's so funny for me to see um, pastors, you know, and ministers. Um, get up, you know, with that iPad. To me, that's just hilarious yeah. to me. Like, my pastor is in his 50s, and he preaches with his iPad. Yeah, exactly. No, people in church, Technology 60, help. 70. Yeah, because they, one, you can't see, no shade to them. They can't see them little words in the Bible. You know what I mean? Like, no, not even being funny. Seriously, like, put that iPad, put that tablet on the biggest font it can go. Mm-hmm. And you sitting, you good. Like, your head not hurting. You don't really need your readers. You know what I'm saying? So. And that's the thing. So, like, when I, so I go to a mega church. Okay. Um, a mega church. And it ha- it's a black mega church, which is rare in America. But okay. with that, it comes with a lot of technology advances. Yeah. Like, I pay my tithes on automatic withdrawal. So, I pass the bucket and I ain't putting nothing in it. But don't look at me like I'm crazy because I paid on Thursday. <laughs> Thanks, bro. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about church people in a minute. We'll, get to, we'll, get <laughs> we'll talk about church people in a minute. <laughs> we will. All right. So when you're thinking about Christianity for millennials, like, do you think it's really a generational difference or is it because we're still young? <sighs> I hate, you know, being the devil's advocate. But it's a, it's a blend. Yeah. <laughs> it's a blend. I, mean, um, I just feel that way too, though. Like, yeah. I feel like somewhere in the middle. This guy is, and it, it's not even just to say that for the sake of the question, but that's literally what it is. Um, and just looking at our age, obviously, we have a lot going on in our lives. Um, and like I said, age to me is a mindset mm-hmm. at, any, at any time, you know, just because you're 50, you know, and like, <laughs> that don't mean, that don't mean, you're smarter than me or more educated in a certain specific, in a certain topic. I'm they gonna respect you because you're the people in the back. They did one time. Just because you're 50 <laughs> doesn't make you smarter than me. All right. Okay, because granted, I'm always gonna respect my elders. Um, one, that's how I was raised, but two, that's the that's what you do, you know. Um, and that's just you treat people how you want to be treated, regardless of their age. But when it comes to elders, I'm always gonna respect them and hear them out. The flip side to that is. I'm not going to be demeaned because of my age, mainly because you were once my age, you know, and, that, and that's, you should understand how that feels. Like, don't demean me because of my age. That's, if that's just dumb. You know what I mean? So again, I think our age plays into it, but generationally, as we said, the generation um, and the culture of our generation is always going to play into everything, every single thing. Um, and Christianity just happens to be one of those things that's affected. Uh, positively, positively and negatively by our generation, but when we're and I know we're speaking on the positive note. Um, I think it's been extremely beneficial, like you said. The the key thing being our desire to seek change in the things we see. That has been the most, um, I think, beneficial uh, output of this movement. You know, of millennial Christians. It has to. I will say that with regards to every aspect of life, like we're we challenge the status quo like we're not doing things just because that's how you've always done it is that the best way to do it yeah. just because we've done it forever and ever Typically it not. right it hasn't been working um uh, most <laughs> things haven't been working you can't even explain to me why this is the best way to do it other than because i said so and because i said so don't work on adults like that ain't gonna work they still think we high school they still think millennials 16 
<laughs> they don't know. You know what I mean? They don't know. Millennial started at 1980. The oldest millennial is 38. Is it? You but can't you know, tell me I'm not growing at 38. But you know the hardest thing, like you just said, when you ask somebody why, that, that question seems to just, like, destroy people. Like, why? Like, why, like, why is it? I'm not even being disrespectful. I just want to know why. Like, exactly. Because it, I feel like I have a solution. I feel like I have a solution. I'm asking why because I want to know. One, I do want to know why things are done a certain way. Exactly. And I feel like I'm entitled to know why I'm doing things. Right. Like, why am I doing this? Can you tell me why I'm doing it? Yep. If I want to be able to explain to somebody else. And if you can't, now I'm going to question, well, why are any of us doing this? You know, why is Exactly, exactly. So yes. I have a why question. Okay. <laughs> it's not in very well. I didn't play that one. Let's flow. Let's go. Let's flow That's with it. Right. Why do you think our generation views religion differently? Ooh, um, openness. Um, that was, I took a, I took a class, um, I was, I was junior, I think, college, and it was um, on religion. So I'm like, this should be interesting, right? So it was on Christianity, um, Islam, and Judaism, right? So walking to the class, and I mean, my, my professor, you know, was an older white lady. Um, she was extremely cool, you know. Nah, she was cool. She was she was chill, and I and I had the same notion walking into the class, like, <laughs> how are we about to do this? You know what I mean? Now, you know, how does this work? <laughs> yeah, how is this about to work? And you know, with any class you walk in, you're going to gauge your classmates and peers just to see how this is about to go day one. Because if I know, you know, you got somebody that's a know it all over here, and, or they be back here talking, I just need to know where I need to be. You know? Right. So, the class had a good mix. Um, and one thing I appreciated about my class was when we got midway through, the comfort level in the class was extreme. Okay. Um, but one thing I will say, you know, you walk in that classroom and you have to wear that faith on your sleeve, like, tight. Um, because we, we go into it. And I, what I, one thing I really did appreciate about the professor was that she, she moved with caution. Okay. But she also, also didn't hide, you know, her faith. Um, and as an educator, you, you, you're you assuming that this person is extremely, you know, knowledgeable of what they're presenting to everyone. So I took comfort in the fact that she wasn't high from her faith because, you know, I wasn't going to hide from mine either. So, um, but I think the thing that helped us most in that class was that we learned about how all of the religions overlap. So that, that was, that blew my mind that these other religions recognize, <laughs> recognize... <laughs> Is Jesus calling? No, I'll play with you. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but look, for real. <laughs> we recognize every every religion recognizes, um, or at least in those three, recognize, you know, significant figures in the other religions. Mm -hmm. So they're not they're not um saying that those Jesus that Jesus Christ is absent from Christ. You know, they just have a different view of who Jesus Christ is. For me, regardless of how they viewed Jesus Christ, right, um, or Mary or Buddha or whoever, you acknowledge them. For mm -hmm. me, that that is major for me to know that you, you even acknowledge that, you know, said person um, or spirit or God or whoever exists. Mm -hmm. That was important for me. So upon me learning that and then speaking to others about that, just to see that other people already knew that. <laughs> I'm like, I'm late. Like, Whoa, y'all already knew that? Like, okay. My bad. Uh, did somebody tell grandma them? Mm -hmm. Or she ain't... Grandma them don't listen. At, that's what I'm saying. So I'm like, okay, that's the point, right? So when you talk about us, we're we're educated because we're, we're uncomfortable with the unknown. Mm -hmm. That is the key. It's un, it, it's, it makes us uncomfortable. I think that's been great. That, that excites me. Um, because I know I want to know anything I'm involved with. Let me know the ins and outs. And we are a very transparent group of people, yeah. too. Like, there used to be so many taboo topics that yeah. are laughable now. Exactly. Like, <laughs> like y'all ain't going to talk about that. Like, Open up. <laughs> Open up. Like that deep, fam. <laughs> never that deep. I always what I say is never that deep. Like exactly. Like even just thinking about like even if you know YouTube was a thing back in my grandmother's generation, mm -hmm. I really don't know that YouTube would have been a popular thing because it was a generation where you just didn't talk about stuff. Yeah. You just dealt with it. 
And that was a pro- good, bad, or indifferent. You didn't brag. You didn't mop. You didn't mope. You know what I mean? Like, you just didn't talk about stuff. Just kept it moving. You took it as, as it was and, you know, moved it's along. It you move forward. It is what it is. That's and that's a. I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine living, living like that. You know, even to that, even to that example. Like my grandma, I was having a discussion with her. I love my grandmother to death, um, and we were talking about terrorism. Mm. And I was talking about um, speaking on domestic terrorism. You know, and I, the young man that, um, well, let me not call him a young man. The monster who murdered. Um, what? And even when you say that, you're like, which one? <laughs> it's like, yo, it's so many. Not even joking. But it was one of them. Um, and we were talking about him. Yeah. And my grandma was like, how do you know he's a terrorist? I'm like, what do you mean, how do I know he's a terrorist? She was like, how do you know he's a terrorist? I'm like, grandma, if you look up the definition of terrorism or terrorist, he's a terrorist. Like, <laughs> By definition. Straight up a terrorist. Yeah. Their mindset is automatically associated to Al-Qaeda, and Iraq when you talk about terrorism. But when you got a little boy who walks into somebody's church and shoots a bunch of people just because they black. Terrorist. It's, Shoot it's up a school. Like terrorism. Yeah. But it's terrorism. Shoot up a school. Terrorism. College campus. Terrorism. terrorism. Movie theater. It's not international terrorism. See? But see, that's... And now, again, I can't blame her for that um, because... That's not in her thinking, right? And that's fine. You know, that's that's fine. It's my job, you know, to tell her. No, <laughs> he's a terrorist. Actually, he's a terrorist. Let's Google the definition. <laughs> he's a terrorist. Don't let just because his just because his eyes are a different color and his he looked normal, quote unquote normal. Um, he's a terrorist. You know, it, it's it's that simple. So I mean, even speaking on that, it's like wow. Okay, I see the gap. <laughs> that's when I was like, okay, the gap is evident. <laughs> Oh, right here, and it's it's blaring. Um, so yeah, yeah. You. So what do you think are some of the challenges that come with being a millennial and a Christian? Trying to fit in, um, and that's with either counterpart or a certain counterpart in general. <laughs> we're both. We're yeah, both. yeah. So I'm even when we, were, we we were discussing the book on Weird by uh, Craig. What is it? Groschill. Again, Groschill. But the book was given to me by one of my professors, um, and the book is pretty much about trying to live um, as a Christian millennial, um, trying to live, you know, your life as a young person, um, but also trying to walk in the light of Christ and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and the book kind of explores the difficulty behind doing that. Um, and I don't need the book to tell me the difficulty behind doing it because you, you know, you you overlap those things in your daily. It's the, it's the daily lifestyle we live. Um, where you try to combine, you know. Um, letting your light shine right because you want to do that uh, and let that be through you know your faith your works the people you deal with on the daily but also you know trying to maneuver life as a young person you know in friendship circles um even your family you know that those those entities you know that that influence you in whatever way it may be you know partying drinking whatever you whatever you're into um, and then it, it's hard, you know, it's like, man, this is difficult. Like, right. And for some reason, millennial and Christian almost feels like a contradiction. Extremely. And that's, I think that's my biggest challenge is understanding that one, <laughs> it shouldn't be a contradiction, okay. but it is. And like you said, trying to fit into both. Like, as a Christian, I don't really fit in because I have tattoos. I'm not a virgin. I don't believe in certain value. You know what I mean? Like, there's yeah, certain things of, of the Christian value system that I don't believe in. Um, the biggest case in point is I believe that I don't necessarily side with the church when it comes to gay rights. Yeah. I really don't. I agree with you on that. Yeah. And I think so then but then on the flip side, I don't fit in with millennials because I have values, I have standards, I have standards. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't disrespect the millennials. We have standards. Standards from I know what you mean. Uh, I know what you mean. <laughs> although I have lived with someone in the past, like moving forward, I don't plan on doing that until I'm married. You know, although 
I'm not a virgin. I don't plan on being with someone until I'm married. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm with you. comfortable with saying, like, I'm doing this for religious reasons. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, I'm no, I can't party with you on Saturday night because I got church in the morning. That's a good song. <laughs> like, I got church in the morning. You know that song. Like in real life, though. <laughs> real but now nah, I'm with you. I I understand 100. percent And that's and like and everything you said is literally what you know what we're talking about here. What is important and what needs to be, um, you know, spoken about. What, where does the line you know get drawn, um, or or where can we overlap or does it even overlap? Are we allowed to, you know? Can we change anything? Yeah, are you allowed to walk with one foot on each side? You know, and it's the hardest thing, you know, is answering that question, you know, and that all those answers are going to come based off of who you choose to follow um, as your faith leader or, you know, who you choose to worship with and things like that. You know, it's amazing to me how you visit different churches and, Mm -hmm. um, or even when you hear somebody speak on a scripture or speak on scripture, excuse me. And it's just it's just funny to me how how their mind works um, in exploring the truth behind it. Like for me, okay, when you talk about Psalms, the Book of Psalms, okay, Psalms is books, okay, it's not verses. No, so when I hear a sixty year old pastor, minister, or anybody of that light say verse or chapter, excuse me, chapters, Psalms isn't in chapters. There's no any chapter of Psalms. You know what I mean? So it's Psalms one, Psalms two, yeah. Psalms or divisions. You know what I'm saying? So we not so for me it's like, okay, I learned that when I was three. So who taught you? You know what I mean? Even when you talk about come as you are. For that pastor. <laughs> I'm not even from, but I'm just saying, when you talk about come as you come as you are, right? So people always take that as I can wear a mini skirt to church. That is not what the Bible is talking about. Come, in, come as you are in spirit. And, in spirit. and I think there's still a difference. Like, yes, you can come as you are. Yeah. Like my church used to do dress down in the summer. Of course. As you, it's hot. It's hot. I'm not wearing no suit, bro. You hear me? But, but that suit. doesn't mean you come in raggedy clothes. Like, it's still a respect for the building. The that house. Into. Exactly. Yeah. And, like sometimes like for bible study like i go to bible study in sweatpants because i don't really i'm like listen i made it Y'all, whatever comes out of this closet okay i'm here y'all don't <laughs> know what's going on Sundays, it's still like you know i may not get like suited and booted but i'm also not gonna come in here in booty shorts because that's distracting yeah like you know what i mean like there's still certain respect for where i'm at like exactly. I love sundresses, but I'm not wearing a clinky sundress to church because what I don't want to be is I don't want the devil to be able to use me. Exactly. Exactly. And the old men gonna let them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, mine's bad. But even on that, it's just that those are the questions that we have to start talking about, you know, and that's exactly. that's something that will never be eradicated. It's sad to say that that's going to always resurface in church. That's a, and Eddie, that's not even, I don't even know if that's generational. Because it's some it's old ladies. Be. It's old ladies that cut up with that foolishness. You know what I mean? So I, that's not even generational to me. That's just a, a gap. You know what I'm saying? And, and understanding. But like you said, you know, getting into the older women that dress very inappropriately. Yeah. And honestly, I'm sick of seeing it. But they don't care. They don't care. <laughs> they coming as they are. <laughs> they don't care. How they are. Okay. That's how they coming. Like you knew that dress was short when you got it. Like, but again, I me, like you said, I don't have an issue with you wearing it. Like you wear what you want, it's your body. I don't that, that doesn't bother me at all. I don't care. But you in church, like Yeah, like you said, like we came here, we came here for one thing. Like we came here to worship, you know, um enjoy the atmosphere of of what, you know is laid out, you know, through however you worship. Right. And, and we, like you said, we don't need any distractions, you know, and that, and that goes for men too. Like, we're, again, we're clothes that fit, like, <laughs> whether that be however, you know what I'm saying? Like, not the size you want to be. Yep. We all have goals. 
<laughs> we're gonna get there. Yeah, we're gonna get there. You know what I mean? But, but like I said, everything you know, everything has, um, everything has rolled out. You know, I think the way it's supposed to be rolled out. And in this time, you know, like you said, we're not shy. Um, we want answers. We have questions. Right, and right. I think you know, millennial and Christian, though it may be you know weird or oxymoronic, I think it's so pivotal to the discussion of how we're moving forward as a society, um, even with religion, you know, it, it, right. specifically with religion, but even with things surrounding it, you know, just the culture in general. How how does religion play into that Christianity um, specifically? How does it shape where we're going? You know, where and I, and I ain't talking about heaven. I'm talking about where we're moving forward to. <laughs> exactly. Um, as, a, as a society. So. Exactly. So speaking of moving forward, <laughs> how do we make that connection with millennials who may be suffering from church hurt? Because um, yeah. church hurt is a real thing. Like, yeah. how do we connect with with those millennials? I've been waiting on this question. Woo! Oh, this one. <laughs> we put this, this going on Facebook. Yeah. Okay, let me get this one. Now, this one, okay, so I haven't been a member of a church since 2012, 11. Okay. Um, and whoever watching this, you know, I don't mind telling, telling my business because I'm going to tell it anyway. You know, somebody gets something from it. But um, we had a situation where the pastor, who's also my uncle of my home church, um, this man, you know, for lack of better words, built this church. Um over the years. I'm talking about 50 years. Mm -hmm. 50 years? I'm only 25. You know what I mean? So, And back then, I was what? 2011? I ain't doing math right now. I was young. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you talk about, you know, somebody who's given their whole life right. um, to Christ, but also to the people of the church. Mm -hmm. um, fast forward, you know, he gets sick you know, um, experiences some health issues. So we're in the process of getting a new pastor, you know, which was exciting. Um, also a little, you know, a little weary, disheartening because it's a lot going on, but you understand that we, we need somebody to lead. And I, I always believe, yeah, I always believe a leader is necessary, you know, it's because if anything, they're going to keep you focused on your goal. Um, and I, I'm all about good leadership. I, I, you know, I try to be a good leader every day. So with me, leadership has always been important. So we, we bring in these two ministers um, to, well, three actually, which narrowed down to two. It's pretty much like a, like a tryout, you know what I mean? To come in and speak and meet the congregation. I get it though. It's important. Yeah. yeah. And this is a family church. You know, these are legit. Everybody in here is my cousin. You know, everybody in here I grew up with. Yeah. Hey, auntie. Yeah, straight up. What up? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Straight up. So I grew up in this church. I learned how to play drums in this church. I got baptized in this church. My first communion experience in this church. It's home. You know what I mean? I probably choked on my first fish bone at this church. So it's like, I was straight up. No, seriously. Country. Um, Everything was at this church. And in my mind, you know, I'm getting married at this church, right? That's that's how my mind is working. Because you grow, um, you just expect it, yeah. Yeah, right. like even later in life, like, you know, Lord willing, you know, I move away and have a family, like, I, I might get flown back to be buried at this church. You know, that's how my mindset was working. Right. At the time. Bring in, you know, bring in two ministers, you know. Long story short, we choose one. Um, and it's completely a circus. Um, and I mean, to the T. Monkey. <laughs> Clowns, what else? Elephants, all of that, all of that, just a straight circus. Was the seal there? It, in full effect. <laughs> in full effect with the with the beach ball, you know what I mean. In full effect, just clownery, you know, um, to the you know point where police had to come to the church. It was yeah, it was a lot going on, just transition wise, you know, disrespecting. Um, I passed the marriage, which is my uncle, you know, fighting, cussing in the church, you know, just stuff. It's like, and it was like, I'm at work. I'm in, you know, I'm young. I'm at work, coming home from school to work. And people ask me like, why are the police up there at y'all church? I'm like, Lord have mercy. So, you know, eventually you fast forward this guy. Um, and I'm not going to call him a pastor because he doesn't respect the cloth. Um, this guy, he stripped people of their positions in the church. Okay. Um, in specific, I mean, specificity, my parents, you know, because they didn't side with the things he was doing. 
um, you know, stripped them from their Sunday school roles and, you know, rolled over the usher board. Just because I don't agree with you. Yeah. So at that moment, you know, things started going left. Then he started sending out letters to ban people from the church. <laughs> Yo, are you serious? <laughs> Banning people from the church. So. I didn't even know that was possible. Yeah. Legally changing the church name. Are you serious? Like, yo, yeah, so all of that, you know, to put in retrospect the idea of church hurt, that for me is church hurt. That is why I have not joined a church. Um, my parents have since joined another church um, and they love it there. You know, I'm so excited for them and happy for them, you know, and they get to further their Christian experience and do the things they want to do. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's not that simple, only because they, they came up in a time different, you know what I mean? And it's, their church home is amazing. I love going there, visiting everything. Um, but for me, it's just, it just feels a little different, you know? And I feel like I took that hit so hard mm -hmm. because that's all I knew. Right. All I knew. So when you talk about church hurt, for me, it's all about meeting people where they are. Um, and I mean that in spirit, but also the fact that the millennials are not in church. So when you talk about meeting meeting us where we are, and you want to, and you you claim to be a minister, a pastor, an evangelist, whatever you your calling is, you need to get out in the streets and literally meet these people where they are, <laughs> because they're if you're in the church, yeah, if you're in the church talking to us, and we're not in the church, how are we hearing you? <laughs> how are we hearing you? You know, so that's that's my plea. <laughs> Yeah, straight up, unless you just really got that Whitney Houston type vocals, you know, we ain't we ain't hearing you. Uh, so it's like that church hurt for me is shaming, which is going to happen. You know what I mean? Like you sitting there telling me you're going to hell because you like women. You're a woman. Right. And that's so that's what I will say. I think when I think about this answer about how do we connect with millennials um, who have experienced church hurt, I think we have to stop judging and start loving. And I think a lot of times Christians take get on- Get on the shirt. Huh? You get those on the shirt, I'll order one. I'm pre-ordering right now. Give me one, I, I wear a large. <laughs> you gotta I come up with a catchier title than that. <laughs> I like that though, that's straight to the but, point. And that's really what it is. Like Christians take on the responsibility of judging on behalf of God instead of loving on behalf of God. And that's what he told us to do. And Matthew, he asked, the question was asked of Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? You know what his answer was? What was it? Love, your, love, my, love God with all of your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Exactly. <laughs> what they doing though? Judging. Judging. And that ain't but, our place. You but what's, it, what stones do they have though? That's always my thing. What stones do you have to cast? You know, like, you have none. And that, that's really the crazy part. It's like, you got your own sin. And if all sins are created equal, Boop. miss me, bro. Like, miss me with that. You know what I mean? Like, get out of here with that, bro. You've been cheating on your wife for 10 years. Like, get out of here. You know what I'm saying? Just simple stuff like that. Like, bro, get out of here with that. We're not. And that's the thing. And then people, especially when it comes to homosexuality, like, people like to say that, oh, it's an abomination. Yeah. Okay, in that same scripture where it listed homosexuality as abomination, it listed drunkards, adulterers, <laughs> fornicators, cheaters, liars. Everybody. It listed everybody. <laughs> All of the above. Like you Everybody. Know, you know what I mean? And, and really and truly, and then let he who was without sin cast the first stone. Judge your mama. Hey, fine. <laughs> like, can't find them mama look you know I mean? my hands empty <laughs> i don't have no stones to cast that's what i'm saying like and, and i think if we as christians understood that it's our place to love regardless yes. i think then we could start to heal some of that church hurt so um, it'll and, be just beautiful you said what it just it would simply just be beautiful yeah. i mean you look at the role of the church the role of the church is to support the surrounding community um, in, in its best ability. You know, 
I've never been a fan of going out. You know how you got those preachers on college campuses? Mm -hmm. That is so opposite of my understanding of what, you know, walking in the light of Christ is like, to be okay. Christ-like. Um, and I couldn't, for the life of me, see anybody, you know, with Jesus or claim to have Jesus in their heart holding the sign, telling people they're going to burn in hell for whatever this may be. And I mean, honestly, with that, with that mindset, the rebuttal honestly should be, I'll see you there. Um, because <laughs> that's hatred. You hate that person. It, it's no way in the world you can sit there and tell somebody that and claim you love them. And I think as a generation of millennials, we're very, because we're a generation that doesn't believe in doing it just because I said so, um, the, the fear approach isn't effective. At all. Like, I'm a Christian because I know what God's love feels like. No. I'm a Christian and I follow his, his, his word because I've felt him in my life. No. I feel like that's, like that's my daddy. Yeah. <laughs> like that, you know? Hold up. Hold up, Pop. Like, for real. And I talk to him like that, too. Like, I be like, Dad, you got to figure something out. Like. And even me, I feel like me, I feel like I'm... I'm in a more of a, I think, a more common space as it relates to millennial Christians. Um, and that and those people that speak, speak specifically to being that, you know, I'm a you know, I'm in that that middle, that weird middle part, you know, where I'm still uh and I and I've never been one to, you know, say I'm you know, it's ba Bible basher, you know, that that's I can't yeah, I can't live a lie. You know what I mean? I can't do that to myself. Um and it would just honestly be it would be discouraging to others, you know, for them to believe that, you know, I, um, like I'm living two lives. You know what I mean? No, that's not the case at all. I'm honestly trying to figure it out. You know, that's, and that's what you to figure out how this all fits. <laughs> that's what anything. I like to have a good time. I like to go out. I like to enjoy myself. Um, I, I love my friends. I like the party. You know, I, I enjoy it to some degree, but ultimately I know Christ died for my sins. Um, and I know that I'm trying to live a life, you know, appealing to him, right? Um, and also letting my light shine through my good works, you know? So, man, we go fly, you know, my father in heaven, right? Because I feel like my works are good and the things that I'm doing are good. And they are, for sure. Yeah, and I feel like it's shining through itself, right? I don't have to put on this facade or, or carry a Bible around everywhere, even though I do on my phone. But, you know, yeah, straight up grandma oh um, but i'm not you know what i mean i'm not about to bash scripture into somebody's head um or put my religion on somebody who didn't ask that's not that's not what we're here for you know i think we're here to show god's love and i think we're here to like and and really when it comes to like bible bashing i think for me first of all i'm just not that type of person can't be I'm that's not annoying with anything like even with motivational oh, speaking like if you don't want to get on this track it's okay you can stay angry over there. Stay over there. Keep that okay. negative energy. It's okay. Keep that negative um, energy away from so, me. <laughs> exactly. But beyond that, I think for me, it's about like I got enough. I need to be focused on. Like I can't worry about your sins. I got my own sins. I'm trying to get under control. You know what I mean? Like, and and I'm also aiming to live my life in a way that people ask questions. And when they start to ask questions, they're ready to hear the answer. That's the point. And that's the that's the driving home factor. You want to live a life where people want to look at you and say, why is that happening? Yeah. How'd you do that? And I would gladly say. I would gladly tell you. It's it's simple, man. You know, the, the good we do. Um, you know, I always, you know, I tweet. I tweet every day, my daily tweet. You know what I mean? I will not overlook the blessings bestowed upon me. That's my daily tweet. Yeah. My goal is to <laughs> you say what? <laughs> That what? I'm aware. Oh yeah, you see, you know, and it's and my goal is to you know for my years too. Years and my goal is to remind myself this is not about me. Yeah. Anything that I've been given, anything that I've been given, opportunity, vision, you know, my desire, my hunger to do better. Yeah, it's it's because you know it's been placed in me to do this. This I I would be a fool to think I'm doing this alone. You know, I would literally have to be a fool because it's been some situations uh, where I felt that I could possibly, you know, slip and fall um, mentally, you know, into some some deep places. Yeah. But here I am. You know what I mean? And that, and that's the lifestyle you want to have. Is like, like you said, that 
that literally was everything tied up with a ribbon. Your life needs to be viewed as if it's a questionnaire that needs to be posted. You know, after every move you make, somebody should say, how you do that? Like, how you do that? You know, how how in the world did you pull that together? You know, you're so young. You know, how did, how did, how did you do that? I get that a lot when people be like, when I was your age, I would. I'm like, well, it was in you. <laughs> you didn't act on it. Yes. You know, it is what it is. So yes. I want to I want to wrap up today with a final question. Okay. What is your favorite scripture and why? Mm. I know you weren't expecting this one. I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't. Well, when we talk about we talk about scripture. 23rd Psalms, 23rd Division Psalms. I really enjoy, and not only because that was such a long, <laughs> long thing for me to learn at such a young age, you know, it, and I'm not going to say it because y'all need to know it. Go look it I'm up. Look it up as soon as we know, like, I'm not a lie. <laughs> Go look it up. I'm about to Google it on my smartphone. <laughs> what, you about to look it up? I'm going to Google it on my smartphone. my shepherd, I should not want. He making me to lie down in green pastures. He okay. leaves me to lie still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou with me. The rod and thy staff, they comfort me. They prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. I anoint my head with oil, my cup on the throat. With surely goodness and mercy to follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And that, the reason I love that so much is because that speaks to the turmoil that we face daily um, in life. Right, so you talk about the valley of the shadow of death. When you're moving through out here and you, you're trying to make good decisions, there's so much negativity. You look at the news, the news is so depressing. Like everything around us is placed strategically to depress us and suppress us okay. and oppress us. Okay. So when you talk about keeping your eyes on the prize um, and knowing you know that God is with you, walking with you, and sometimes carrying you, y'all know, y'all know that one. <laughs> the footprints in the sand, y'all already know. Carrying you um when you can walk no more that that just gives me peace it's okay for me to be tired sometimes you know right right it's okay for me to take a break sometimes i, I get that be perfect in our weaknesses it's, but he already knows you know what I mean? so so he it's like <laughs> exactly so it's all i'm good and comfortable and slowing down yeah. so you know the 23rd division of songs i love that because it is always going to carry you through those hard times um that what you know? What is <laughs> what is life? You know, without without struggle, you know. It, you look back, and I always say, with anything hard that you hit in life, um, you're merely facing things that other men have already overcome. Mm -hmm. Somebody already beat this, right? Right. So, sure. so it's my turn, you know. And that that and that twenty third division of the Psalms is what's gonna see me through. So, okay. For me, I will say Romans eight twenty eight. Okay, what's that? Now my favorite scripture. All things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Which not as long as, as you <laughs> look. <laughs> you had bars on that one. <laughs> you the 16 of y'all, hot 16. <laughs> um, the reason that's my favorite is because it reminds me like the good, the bad, like the really, really, really bad that I've been through. The big things, even mm -hmm. the smallest of things, end up working together for my good. Exactly. And even though I may not know what that is now. Yeah. And you typically don't. <laughs> it, it, I'm going to figure it out eventually. So, like, when I was going through the grief of my miscarriage, like, that was the worst I've ever, like, I hit rock bottom and I could not understand why. But there's been so much good that has come of it, yeah. like, come from going through that. So, that's that's when I learned like the worst can be used for your good as well. Mm -hmm. When I learned that the smallest of things can end up being for your good. So 2012, I randomly went to an event with one of my sewers. Um, she was supporting somebody that she went to school with. Okay. And she was like, Oh, just come out. I was like, all right, cool. What else? So my name ended up being on their email list. serve. Cool. Fast forward to 2017. The beginning of 2017 he randomly sends out the organizer of that event sends out an email so we're talking about five years later yeah way later <laughs> way later okay. sends out an email about um a coaching program that he was creating 
this person is now my biggest mentor. That's crazy. And now we're working together to create a new version of the coaching program. Small, small wins. And that came from me supporting someone who was supporting someone else and asked me to go to a free event. I'm just here. <laughs> you thought. You that, like, you thought. <laughs> that even, the, even something that you don't even realize is that deep can be used to literally change the trajectory of your life. Like, he literally helped me create my business structure. Like, we, I mean... Ground up. That's motivation, though. I mean, that in itself, that just motivates you to move in a certain way, you know. And again, we're not saying you can't have bad days. Everybody's entitled to have, you know, a, a sad day. But it's it's up to us. I'm understanding you know. that something can happen from it. Exactly. You know, that's and that's why, you know, you got to realize you always talk about the silver lining and things like that. Yeah, but in that, it's a message in the mess. That's simple. You know, it's a message. You can't have a testimony without the test. Yeah, <laughs> you better take a lap. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but for real, it is. It is. It's for life. We gotta realize that though. You know, you know, without without struggle, there is no no gain, you no know, their growth. And you know, that's supposed to be uncomfortable. We just gotta embrace the process, fall in love with the process, um, and realize what you said, those small things. Never downplay a day. Anything. And I think that really falls down to, like, you either trust him or you don't. That's faith. But if you trust him, you understand that he's already gone before you and set the path. That's faith. And even if he allows something bad to happen to you, he has a plan. You know, you know what I mean? Like, there's a plan. So with that being said, thank you so much for the discussion. I think it was definitely um, helpful. Like, I learned a lot. I really did. I did. I I think it was good conversation, for sure. And so, guys, we want you to comment in the comments. Like, what do you think is your biggest challenge being a Christian millennial? Or if you're a millennial, what is something that has maybe deterred you from being an active Christian? Cool? All right, guys. See you next week.